Do you remember the internet searches? At 2.49, whilst Casey's cell phone is pinging a tower nearest the home, the Anthony's family desktop computer is activated by someone using Casey's password protected account. At 2.51, someone does a search for foolproof suffocation, clicking on several pro-suicide websites. Right. It wasn't me. I can tell you that everyone had each other's passwords because it was a family computer. But I didn't make those searches. Do you think it's possible your dad did that 2.51 p.m. search if he was at work at 3? Where he worked and where our house was located was less than 10 minutes. There was enough time for him to have been home, still made those searches, and then left for work. At 3.02, we have George using his cell to call the house landline. Okay. But where was his phone pinging at that point? Was it pinging at work or was it pinging closer to the house? We don't know because we don't have George's cell phone records. That's also part of the problem. We don't have George's cell phone records. All right, Chase, what do you got? We see it again. There's a shift down here with the eyeballs and internal dialogue, rehearsing uh, what the answer might sound like. But keep in mind, we're looking for mountains of data here all the time. This one little thing, if someone ever tells you that that one thing means deception, you have a horrible trainer and you're listening to an amateur at best. So there's head shaking and this denial, they begin at different times. The head shaking and the denial are mistimed. There's a confirmation glance back toward the interview to confirm. Then there's digital flexion. This is a stress sign where our, our hands just randomly start curling up, even if they're at your side, sitting on a table. Then there's two requests for approval, this little eyebrow flash right here. There's hand retraction again with some more digital flexion and fidgeting. Then we're shifting to internal dialogue again. There's a confirmation glance again. There's mouth grooming, immediate mouth closure after a statement and pursed lips. All of these speak to deception. I know uh, a lot of you guys are going to unpack some of these things. But the big one is, did dad do these you know, searches? This explains the possibility instead of saying yes. So explains just the possibility. So injecting more ambiguity, still unable to say yes, unwilling to commit to anything but ambiguous possibilities. The question was only referencing the possibility in the first place. So all she had to do was say yes. Even if she said yes sometime during this long answer, she would still have said yes, but she never did answer the question. And then she's repeating the words of the interviewer again. This is, uh, if I scored this on the behavioral table of elements, this would score high on deception, which I I did not for this one. So, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I'm going to score her on my meter, and she's way <laughs> off the chart. It's very simple. I agree with you. All those things that you just said, now let's add a couple more uncharacteristic blink rate increase. We know that when people are feeling stressed, their blink rate goes through the roof. And, you know, there are lots of people who tell you different reasons. My opinion is that your eyelids are designed to wet your eyes and to protect your eyes. And as you feel stress and those mucous membranes start to dry up, you drag a wet, a dry cloth over your eye, your blink rate increases, is my opinion. But we see that. We see her doing exactly what you said. Well, as she goes into internal voice and she's thinking about how to navigate the sentence she's about to put. She does what I call sacred space. That means a barrier. I close myself. I put something between me and you. And then I start to mill my fingers or do something to make myself feel comfortable. You're now creating a new space and then making it comfortable. So there's that. She does requests for approval and does right by request for approval. I mean, her brow rises and her voice lilts and she draws with her eyes and she says, it wasn't me. Shaggy. There you go. Exactly. Illustrators, as she does make her point, she goes back to raising her hands and trying to drive her point. She does what we call turtling just a bit. She shrinks her head down inside her torso just a touch. And then she adapts after that denial. There comes the inside the mouth stress adapter one more time. And then she gets back to that confirmation face where her lower jaw drops. Her lips come in and she makes a weird, goofy smile when she thinks she scored a point. All this together, Chase, on your behavior, behavioral table of elements or my BS meter, she scores really high, really high. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, let me just add 
three more things to that <laughs> just because why would you notice them when you've got so many others there? I mean, you know, why would you? She freezes on the question in a way that we haven't seen her do before. Go back, take a look. It's like it's like the video was frozen at that point. It's the start of fight and flight is freeze. So, you know, interesting though, she may be prepared for this question. Unconsciously, there's still a huge risk factor in this question. So freeze. Um, less than 10 minutes, she does disgust on that, as I would say, probably smelling the rat of her own uh, lie in that or, or yeah, incongruity that or or um, or problem in, in all of this. Uh, last one on this is there's adaption on her ring as well, you know, which is just an escalation of all the other adaptions that, that everybody else has been talking about. But there's one that you'll clearly be able to see there. So just three more, just in case, you know, you were still wondering with all the lists that we'd, we'd given there. Um, you know, interesting chase in, in that how different that reaction is to her reaction on the Xanax uh, piece there. So, I mean, I think it really does put, put even more of a seal on appro of approval on that idea that there is certainly something very different from her Xanax denial to a denial on this. In fact, there's no real <laughs> denial on this at all. Uh, Scott, what do you got for us? I think you guys covered everything. I'm not going to repeat all you're saying. And we'll move along. Lovely. <laughs> well, I see. I wish I could give that to you, but Chase nailed that man. He's 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 up the he's up the he's, he's up like. the game here, man. He's gone next level on. So he's starting. Right. To, you have the pin spin. But Chase is already. He's done. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's done. The old tricks. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, just my old tricks. I got to come up with something. Do you remember the internet searches at two forty nine? While Casey's cell phone is pinging a tower nearest the home, the Anthony's family desktop computer is activated by someone using Casey's password protected account. At 2.51, someone does a search for foolproof suffocation, clicking on several pro-suicide websites. Right. It wasn't me. I can tell you that everyone had each other's passwords because it was a family computer. But I didn't make those searches. Do you think it's possible your dad did that 2.51 p.m. search if he was at work at 3? Where he worked and where our house was located was less than 10 minutes. There was enough time for him to have been home, still made those searches, and then left for work. At 3.02, we have George using his cell to call the house landline. Okay. But where was his phone pinging at that point? Was it pinging at work or was it pinging closer to the house? We don't know because we don't have George's cell phone record. That's also part of the problem. We don't have George's cell phone record. If you like this video, get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.